What's up guys, Andrews here with another patch notes video for you guys. Today we're going to take a look at the NAEU and Korean PC patch notes. But before we get started, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and sub to the channel if you haven't already. Every sub counts as we continue to grow. If you want to go the extra mile and support the channel, you can click on that join button below the video or on my main channel page to offer a small monetary contribution to help keep the channel going. Every membership donation will give you some small perks and a personal thank you before every video I make. I do want to talk about the new class last teaser that we got today for the Heidel Ball announcement that's going to be at the end of the month. We'll do a video on that when that comes out. It's going to be an online presentation for every single region about the upcoming content for the game. These are always uh, usually done every six months for the game. So we already got the teaser image as you can see right here. It's a class with a scimitar. We knew this was a new class. We know for sure it's a new class. Even though when I first saw this, I was like, oh, cool. They're going to give us a skin. And then someone said, why is he wearing a scimitar? That is the new class. The new class was supposed to be a scimitar wielding class after Shy. We didn't get that. Instead, we got Guardian. So now this is the next class. It's a male class. So for those of you wanting to play male only classes, you should be very happy. So maybe Prince of Persia vibe. It could be very interesting. We won't really see anything. Thing. we probably will see a teaser trailer at the end of the month so in a couple of weeks so stay tuned for that now as for the naeu pc patch notes we have a lot of new events for both life skillers and grinders so really good stuff the event seasons of life just started and it's a life xp plus 50 percent boost for our life skills all life skills basically except trading and bartering and that's going to start today um, all the way through june the third there's also the life of florin challenge tab rewards that starts after the reset today it's going to be uh, give you some C and some items that you can use those items you can then combine with loot scrolls to get a sort of 100 plus mastery and 20 percent life xp boost for an hour personally i wouldn't do that unless you just really don't grind and you don't really care about having loot scrolls i guess it's okay if you're a pure life skiller to use that and then transfer it into a life mastery uh, one hour uh, token now the seals that you're going to get they're going to be around 85 to 90 by the end of the event so you can get some goodies with that overall it's nothing crazy the stella's spirit stone is decent it's a 100 mastery kind of like han's heart for the life version of it but again it doesn't repair it will be useless after you've used all the charges just keep that in mind they also have these life skill challenges for each sort of profession so gathering fishing processing alchemy training hunting and i believe cooking as well so every week you're going to have a certain type of clothes that are given to you in the challenge reward tab every day and you can use that basically mastery clothes that will help you do life skills for the majority of the life skill event and even if you don't have any money invested into life skills you can at least partake into this event is basically what they're going for you have a full accessory set you have a full gathering set during the fishing and cooking event week you will have a fishing and cooking set as well the second week will be the processing and alchemy sets and the uh, third week will be training and hunting gathering will be the entire event period so keep that in mind and mastery bonus that you get from these sets are about 420 to 580 and additional 140 weight so not too bad especially if you have no mastery clothes whatsoever now the other event is called wishes for the sky it's very similar to the new year's event that we had not as good it's very similar it's a week long and it gives you a 50 fail stacks if you do the quest every day the more servers that complete the daily quests the more added bonuses we get at the end so a golden bell for 24 hours on the 20th of may a combat xp plus 120 x uh, percent skill xp for the entire week of may 20th and a secret book of old moon that's seven days that will be sent out for everyone so pretty good but Jujo also has a new event but honestly not that good it's about a week long it gives you Kaffir stone bundles by five but there are three million silver each the hards and the black stones that's pretty good because they're mostly sold out especially the hards and the armor black stones they're usually sold out so it's an easier way for you to get some hearts and sharps at, at, a, at a discount finally the last event is called newly discovered treasures probably the most exciting one for me all the rare drops for the compass the map and the infinite potions now drop in other areas of the game that's really cool it's going to be two weeks long so you can now spread out and grind in places that normally people don't grind so if you've been grinding for example in upper sakraya uh, which is okay xp but not many people go out there you're gonna see a lot more people there it's really good i think in terms of if you're going for the infinite potion and you haven't just got no luck 
after like maybe 50 hours in one zone, you can actually now switch over to another zone and not lose your mind completely. I like that event. Pretty good. Again, two weeks only, so keep that in mind. And finally, we have an additional Garment spawn because there was an issue with Garmouth. It did not let you loot. Um, you should have all received a sort of Garmouth bundle if you were in one of the affected servers. And if you uh, didn't, oh, well, on this Thursday, we're going to have an extra additional Garment summon. So when Garment summons for the first time, you kill it, and then another one will summon right after that. So pretty good. Double the chance to get Cron Stones. Moving on, we have Ravam skills added for Shy and Guardian about damn time. So level 56 and level 57 skills were added. Um, I made a video on this already, so I'll have it in the link down below in the comment. Um, the Shy level 56 especially is pretty strong. All accuracy minus 12% and all AP minus 24 5 seconds per hit. On a range skill that follows enemies, that's pretty good and very annoying, so not bad. I like that skill in particular. Uh, the other skills are pretty good. I mean, Guardian gets a little bit more range, which is funny to me, but um, the other shy skill I don't think is is really worth mentioning in my opinion. Now, as for system changes, we have the change the rate at which Black Spirit Rage recovers from 0.15% to 1.5% per second. That's a huge increase and should be very interesting. Uh, in PvP. Guild storage expansion skills have been added in the guild skill window. That's really good if you just want to have more stuff in there and you just like us, we're just maxed out on skills so we have points just racking up doing nothing. So something to use the points for. The aiming point for focus fire has also been changed from a red circle to a parabola. We knew that was coming already. The location of where you can purchase the four types of reblath equipment from Blacksmith, Tran, and Underfoe at Velia has been moved to the top of the window. So that's just nice for people enhancing and building fail stacks in Velia. And exploration sailing quests now reward Karak materials. Very, very nice change. I'm happy we finally got that as well. Now, as for the class awakening PvE buffs, all the classes except Valkyrie, Archer, and Chai have received awakening PvE buffs. I went over every single skill that got buffed and by how much about two lab updates ago. So I'll link that video as well in the comment down below so you can check out each specific one. Now in terms of successions, the Mystic Succession and Guardian Succession got some changes. Um, the Guardian Succession I already went through and the Mystic Succession, well, you can now use Prime Wave Orb on Combo Smoothly when using Fist Fury. You can use Rage Hammer and Combo Smoothly after using Thunder Pound. And uh, you can use Wave Orb, Roaring Tiger and Sea Burial in Combo Smoothly after using Sweep and Kick. And you can use Roaring Tiger, Thunder Pound and Rage Hammer in Combo Smoothly after using Soul Bash. Roaring Tiger and Weibo after using Mass Destruction. I love that change. It's so good. And you can now use other skills in combo smoothly after using Scissor Kick. Also a really nice change. The distance of the character advances after the backward movement of Hidden Claw was increased. So that little iframe step is now a longer distance. That's good. And they fixed the issue where the character would momentarily slow down when hitting targets with Weibo and Rage Hammer. That happens to me so often. So I'm glad that was actually fixed. Now as for KRPC patch notes, we have the Odalita Main Story Part 2 that was Added. It's a new tome and a fail stacks as reward. Again, I went over that in the last labs update. Paddock's Island revamp went through. So 270 AP duo spot now with improved jar mechanics. So when you neutralize the jar, it's not going to spawn lowest snakes, which have a chance to drop dream earrings. Dream earrings are the new DP evasion heavy earring with 17 DP, 4 DR, 13 evasion, and 14 hidden evasion, and 10 accuracy at Tet. Um, the Dead God armor has been changed as well in terms of look for the icon. Now it has varying degrees of color on the icon and a different name depending on the enhanced level. So it used to be the God's Armor Pry to Pen. Now at Pen it's called Armor of the Fallen God and at base it's called uh, Dead God's Armor. So every And it will have different colors. I don't know why they did this, but... Okay. They had a new guild quest, the Wild Herb Life quest that we saw on, on Global Labs, as well as the combat quest for Four Shronoros, Star's End, Thorny Forest, Akman, and Histria have all been added. The Tauros Elite revamp, the Ulatuka Elite, now can only be looted by a player who killed it, but you can be in a party of up to two that can loot it. So now it's on the on the kill. So you kind of have to fight for the kill hit. Guild Galley Armor has been improved. This is huge as well. Additional damage does not change. So don't you're not going to do more damage on sea monsters or other players, but the rations, the weight capacity, and durability have all drastically improved depending on the enhanced level of your blue part so that makes skill galley blue parts more in line with the new like caravel carrick blue parts in terms of increase of stats so now the cannons also got increased from 120 to 360 that's a huge change as well now pearl shop changes uh captain medallions gonna be purchased up to 14 times right now it's up to four times because we have six free and then four slots you can purchase up to 10 yeah so it's um up to 14 times with this change and you can now up have up to 20 sailors up from 10 this was actually asked for by a lot of sailors including myself and that's pretty much it guys that's all i got for you on this pc patch notes update as well as the teaser 
for the um, new class, the scimitar wielding class. Again, we know he's, he's a male class. We know he wields a scimitar. He looks like a striker body build, and he looks like he uses band braces. So maybe, you know, start checking out some band braces if you don't already have one. But as always, this is just speculation about the band brace. We don't know, but we do know this is a new class that's coming, and we do know that we're going to be shown more at the end of the conference. I believe May 30th is when the conference is happening. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.